Welcome to Fathers and Daughters, a podcast where we discuss important topics and current issues from a biblical perspective that are relative to fathers and daughters. Please subscribe and email us at fdpodcast at yahoo.com with questions or episode topic suggestions. All right. Hi. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. It's been a while. I just got a bunch of new clothes, so I'm doing fantastic. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. So today is Friday after Thanksgiving. We haven't done this in a couple weeks just because our schedules were so busy. Insane. You were away on a business trip. I was away on a business trip. It just got really complicated. My plan was to record an episode while you were in Florida at the same time I was in Sacramento, but it just didn't just work didn't out work because out. I forgot that you were going to be three um, hours ahead, three hours ahead. Yeah. So it just didn't work out. And uh, this last week was very busy for me, but we're finally sitting down and getting a time to record. Yeah. So what are we going to talk about today? Tonight, we're talking about family holidays, which also include family drama, family politics, family Family gatherings. Family gatherings, yeah. So that, that's not specific to just two holidays. Um, that's specific to family reunions, um, all that kind of stuff. We're just going to talk about family today, which I'm sure is probably going to bring up a lot, probably for you. Why not for you? Um, I don't, I don't really have that much family drama. No? There's, there's some family politics, sure, and there's some things that have happened, but nothing yeah. that's like as drastic as what you've been through. So, so let me put this preface out there. We just had Thanksgiving. The reason that we chose to do this podcast today is because you've just experienced a family gathering, hopefully. Hopefully you got together with your family for Thanksgiving. And then you might not, be... Not me, but them. Them, right? yeah. Them. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, listeners out there. Um, you would have just experienced Thanksgiving. And now we're going into the Christmas season. So Merry Christmas. And, and, and you'll probably have one or two family gatherings in December too. So obviously we're going to preface this to fathers and daughters for sure. But I want to I want to be able for us to share a little bit about what our experience has been with family gatherings and then be able to help apply it to fathers and daughters. Yeah. So for a lot of you guys, this is the time when you're going to be spending a lot of family time together. And for some of you, it's going to be more family time than you wish you had. But that's just what comes with this time of the year. And we have family that do listen to the podcast. And so... This is a difficult one for us to kind of dive into. Not for me. Not for you. Okay. And and so we want to make sure that we're still honoring to our family that's out there. But the past has happened. There's ways to learn from it. We're going to tell everything from our perspective. And and I hope that this empowers some of you guys to deal with your family drama. Yes, we'll talk about that. But I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I hope that... If you live in Southern California, you enjoy the cold and the rain that oh, we're experiencing yes. right now uh, because we don't get a lot of this usually and uh, and it just it's feels nice. really good. It feels really nice. And we were saying this in the car that it's kind of cool to hear Christmas music when it's cold outside. Mm-hmm. I mean, for cold us, co- quote, yeah, quote, quote, unquote, because for us, 50 degrees, 55 degrees is cold. Yeah. Right. But they've been playing Christmas music already and it's been 85 degrees outside and it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't connect. So anyways, let's talk about family gatherings. uh, Yeah, I'm going to kind of start us off. So I have a friend who once told me, she says, when we get together for family holidays, family gatherings, family reunions, whatever, there's two rules. It says you don't talk about politics and you don't talk about religion. Those are the only two rules her mom has for 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 Thanksgiving or Christmas dinners, family gatherings, whatever. Those are her two rules. And I was like, dang, that just pushes my buttons. Because when I'm told these are the two rules, I'm like, cool, how do we break them? So um, you're, you're still my daughter. I know. I'm like, I love talking about religion. I love sharing the gospel. I love sharing about the word of God. Um, and sometimes politics just come up. Like we're nearing the 2020 election. Sometimes I want to talk about politics. And we have members of our family who are very opposite of what our political views are we're very republican um we tend to vote with the republican party and so we have some family members who claim to be one thing claim to be another thing um and they just they just bicker about it yeah. so i want to know in your family experience growing up and then what leads into now what has your family reunions family gatherings looked like yeah well we're conservative not conservative republican okay. it just happens that 
our it's most of our views party. right now Our align Republican. with the Republican Party. Sure. So I grew up with a big family. My mom had five brothers and sisters, or I think she's one of five. I don't. Okay. I don't remember. And my dad, I think, had eight or nine in his family. And um, most of the family that we used to hang out with, or that used to get together during family gatherings, was my mom's side of the family. I remember Christmases being just very busy. That everyone came to our house because that's where my grandma lived. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed those times because I just remember having a good time with my cousins and my aunt and uncles and being able to see everyone. So it was enjoyable until people started drinking. And during our family gatherings, smoking and drinking was very typical. When people drank too much, there was always some argument that came up. Mm -hmm. And and I just remember that. I remember my extended family that was over at my house, specifically bad-mouthing my dad. Because my dad was not into being a part of that because he worked a lot. Mm -hmm. So he typically went to sleep early. He didn't have holidays off as I do, you know, working for the government. Um, he worked almost every day. So for him, staying up late and drinking and partying was not something that he wanted to do. And uh, and I, I just remember him always just kind of disappearing early in the night because he had to go to work early the next morning. And my extended family didn't respect that. Um, and at the time, I just kind of, I felt like they just kind of fed me that. Mm. And I used to... I used to think that my dad didn't want to be a part of that, that my dad was a party pooper, that um, <laughs> that my dad didn't care about hanging out with us. And now I understand how important it was for him to make sure he was well rested so he could get up early and go to work. Sure. I used to share a birthday with, or I still share a birthday <laughs> with my uncle. And I used to have very elaborate birthday parties. But then like at five o'clock when all the kids went home, then the kegs used to come out and the adults used to start their party because it was my uncle's time to celebrate. Well, two birds, one stone. Two birds, one stone. But that was another big day when the whole family came together. Sure. And there was always an argument. Mm -hmm. Someone ended up arguing. And I learned to drink beer at an early age because I saw everyone drinking. Mm -hmm. um, I'm surprised I didn't start smoking because everyone smoked. But that's what I remember yeah. about family gatherings. Yeah. We have very different family gatherings. Like when I when I was growing up, it was um, everyone always congregated at grandma and grandpa's house. And this is, this is mom's side of the family. Everyone congregated at grandma and grandpa's house. And everyone really got along really well. But there was a lot of, and this is on both sides, there's a lot of passive aggressive ways of dealing with things. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like you said, it's family. Like we all have different personalities. We all, we're all different people. So some, someone's going to disagree about something. I remember being a young kid and hearing someone screaming about something because someone would just get pissed off about something, something else, somebody else said that was 12 years ago or some sort of old family history. And, and, and even some of your family history is a little bit twisted, a little bit different in, in a lot of ways. There's a lot of unknowns on your side of the family too. And, and, and on mom's side of the family, we, we go away a lot. We always would go on like a, a yearly family vacation, the 11 of us. And that was a big family gathering. And the 11 of us would be kind of stuck to each other for six or seven days. We did it earlier this year in March. And everyone, excuse me, everyone usually tends to get along. But but we're, I think the thing that like we're kind of missing is, uh, or that I'm trying to hit on is that we're all so different that someone's going to disagree about something or yeah. someone's going to get irritated by somebody for something. And I think that's something you can't avoid in families as much as we want to strive towards being the perfect family. in in a sense, it's mm -hmm. just not obtainable because we're just different people. Kind of the way I look at it is how do you deal with those family things? And I think a lot of the ways that a lot of families deal with things is is through being passive aggressive. And I've seen that a little bit on both sides of our family a little bit, just a passive aggressive way of dealing with an issue. And, and I think that's kind of starting to change with this new generation of, of, of kids 
uh, kids that are my age, like my, all of my cousins that are on uh, mom's side of the family are 13 and above. Um, two of them are a year and two years younger than I am. And, and, and so we, we all grew up a very close in age. And so go, us all going that teenager phase at one time was a nightmare because we're all, we were all moody. We were all irritated and, and, and it just, it just came to be difficult. But I think with this new generation, um, at least what I've seen in my life is that we're all kind of starting to become a little bit less passive aggressive. We're all starting to try and be a little bit more confrontational about things in a respective way. Sure. Um, I just know for myself, the way that I'm trying to deal with the way people treat other people is to not be passive aggressive and to be upfront about it. I th- I think it's because you guys grew up seeing how dysfunctional mm-hmm. um, our, our family gatherings were sometimes. And you realize that there was so much fakeness sometimes just mm-hmm. to kind of get along. And then, you know, you guys don't want to do that. I would rather have an hour of being real and being honest with each other than 15 minutes of being fake. Well, yeah, but then that's hard because if you're really real with some people, then um, there were a couple of times when people were real and it created conflict. Sure. Um, And I think the way that you deal with that conflict says a lot about your family. There's going to be conflict whether we like it or not. That's that's a given. And that's not just for big family gatherings. That's for when you're just at home, when it's just mom, dad, and the kids, or or mom, dad, stepdad, um, and kids, or dad, stepmom, and mom. You know, like yeah. there's so many different types of family dynamics that there's going to be drama regardless. It's how you deal with it. Is it's and we got into this a little bit when we talked about conflict. And so if you want to go back and re-listen to our conflict podcast, I'd really recommend it. There's going to be a part two to that too, but I wanted to add a little bit of what conflict means in a family gathering setting. Because I think it's really important to, to to talk about why it's important to deal with your family drama up front. Mm-hmm. Because I think the reason that there's so much family drama in, in a lot of people's lives is because it went untouched. The reason there's a lot of hurt with family and the reason that the stigma of, oh, great, we have to get together as a family. Like, oh, the great family gatherings coming up. <laughs> it's such a thing. Like, if you just ask people. Yeah. Um, like, I, I asked so many people uh, last week, like, oh, are you meeting with your family for the holidays? Oh, yeah, I got to get all my whole family together. It sucks be- that that's the stigma for so many people. And it's because no one wants to sit and deal with the conflict. Yeah, I agree. And there was a lot of that in my family growing up and still some of that that's lingering mm-hmm. stuff that no one really wants to talk about, including myself and, you know, on mom's side of the family too. And I think that's why I made it a point to make sure that you and I always talked about crap that sure was going on. I mean, we're never going to agree on everything, mm-hmm. but I don't want us to just sweep it under the rug because I know that that cost a lot of conflict and separation in my family and I don't ever want to have that with you because I don't want to miss opportunities with you or with my grandkids when you have kids and and I don't I don't want to be like that and I I hope I taught you that you're free to confront me with with anything yeah and I think that's why our dynamic is different and a lot of people who see us or meet with us or whatever they always it always comes up and say why the dynamic between the two of you is really good the chemistry between us as father and daughter is really great and I think that has a lot to do with that is that uh, I'm naturally a confrontational person like I want to sit and talk about with the problems that we have regardless if the problem's big small I want to talk about it like let's just work through it regardless well and that's why seeing our family gatherings on each side bug you because you know that hey how come no one is talking about the elephant in the room Uh, and we're like just leave the elephant there just let it be and let's just get through it and you're like no let's let's talk about this and i and i and, and you and i disagreed on on a lot of stuff regarding family issues and and that's part of it is that I want to jump in and it's not a, it's not a need to like rescue anybody. Mm-hmm. It's just that I could see the way things could be so much better and different if things were talked about. But I don't know the details of everything. That's yeah. that's the truth is that I just don't know what everybody's specific drama is. I'm like, let's just put it all out in the open. I'm a big believer in family therapy. I think it's awesome. I think some of the best ways to move on from stuff is when you just didn't talk about it. Yeah. 
it's what's lost me a lot of friendships is because people don't want to sit and talk about the issue. And mm-hmm. I'm like, that's fine. But you will walk away knowing that I tried. I I tried to make this work. And when you stop and not let things get talked about, you're the one giving up, not me. Mm-hmm. And I lost a lot of friends that way growing up. And, and I'm still having that kind of drama today is that it's like people don't want to talk about things. And it's it's easier to just let the elephant be. I won't lie. It's a lot easier to just sit and let the elephant be and be fake about whatever the heck was going on. Yeah. Well, among our family, like you, mom, Ryan, and and I, I always want us to talk about that elephant. Sure. With extended family, I don't really care if that elephant just sits there while we're having our family gathering just so we can get through it. And and that's where you and I disagree. I don't think that's the way to go. You said it before. You said if you don't talk about the elephant in the room, you're missing out on opportunities for relational growth. Among our immediate, among, um, our among immediate, our family. immediate family. I don't think it has to be that way. I think when we don't talk about the issues and the conflict that's happening in family in general, that's a general term that's not immediate. That includes extended family. When you don't talk about the elephant in the room, when you don't talk about the conflict, you're missing out on relational opportunity. And I'm not going to stop encouraging you to to deal with family drama. I'm okay taking you three and then just going somewhere and... And I love that. And and I love that you have that that mindset about my my kids. That we're not going to be that way is that if we do have family drama, it's not going to be something that we sweep under the rug. Because that's not what I want either. But I think it's healthy and it's beneficial for even extended family that your parents and mom's parents and... And the rest of the extended family are able to enjoy my kids Mm -hmm. and that there's not a barrier there because of past hurt or past conflict. To me, it's a chain. And when you see the fix in the chain, things get easier. Yeah, I think mom and I have have learned to just deal with the elephant because it's more important for us not to have conflict among ourselves. Sure. And then just think about extended family as, you know, crazy people sometimes. As long as it doesn't affect us. And we just kind of check out sometimes. Um, and we're doing fine. And that works for us. That's fine. I'll continue to disagree with you. Okay. That's fine. We can agree to disagree. <laughs> we I even mean, said it earlier in this podcast. We're like, we won't always agree on everything. Right. I mean, we have, we have a family gathering coming up. Right? So I hope we have a good time. I do too. And I don't think there's... I think there's certain people in our family who we don't have family drama with and I think there are certain people that we do and I'm not going to stop trying to mend past hurt that involves me because I never want to be someone who has hurt with extended family yeah good that's good yeah that's good yeah as far as me I just forgive everyone and I let me be me yeah I just don't think your family knows that what what you just said what that I forgive everyone for for everything for everything yeah I think things like that need to be sat down and vocalized. I don't hold grudges. Really? It kind of sounds like you do. No, I don't hold grudges. I just choose not to put myself in situations that are not enjoyable. Sure. I, I, th- I, 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 won't, I won't disagree with you there. I think that is wise to not put yourself in a situation where you're going to um, experience conflict. You're going to experience drama. Like, I'm not going to go and th- that's just like putting yourself in a situation where you jump into a group of people who are all talking about someone else. Like, that, that's, that's healthy to not jump into a conversation about gossip. Totally, I, I get that. But there's a difference between dealing with things that have happened in the past and dealing with it so you can move on in a healthy way and avoiding future situations. Those are two very different things. I, I fully agree with you. I think it is healthy and good for people to not be put themselves in situations where they're going to experience sin yeah to put it bluntly to not sin against other people or to not make yourself uncomfortable totally agree with you but i think something that what i'm trying to talk about is the way that we deal with family drama that's happened in the past because i think there's a lot of old elephants (laughs) that Mm -hmm. have just been sitting there and sitting there and sitting there that nobody wants to talk about and i think that's what's been causing a rift between members of the family Hmm. i think it's healthy to sit and talk about those things all right well let me know how it goes well they're not my problems they're yours (laughs) (laughs) so how do we how do we bring this home and relate this to fathers and daughters i I think a really big takeaway is that it's okay to disagree 
I think that's that's huge. And I think we just made a good example of that is that it's mm-hmm. okay to disagree about things. Um, even when you're not at a family gathering, just between a father and a daughter, it's okay to have different opinions. I have a different opinion on how you should be dealing with your family drama and you have a different opinion on how you should be dealing with your family drama. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. I'm, I'm grateful for these disagreements sometimes because they create really healthy conversation between us and how we're going to continue our future when I have kids. Yeah. And we have drama and it's like, hey, we're going to be upfront. We're going to be confrontational. We're going to talk about these things so that our relationship isn't strained for my kids. I think we've done a good job of identifying in our family the traditions that we want to mm-hmm. carry on and the things that we don't want to do, yeah. that, that we don't want to follow, the behavior or... Generational sin. Yeah. You know, we looked at different situations and we've said, yeah, we're not going to be like that because I want to have a good relationship with you and my grandkids. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that would be the first thing was to just identify that, um, it's okay to disagree. I think it's probably the first time in a podcast we haven't agreed about something. And I think that's huge to, to sit and talk about and, and tell fathers and daughters that it's okay to have a heated debate sometimes about heated or not heated, just about things you both feel very strongly about. Mm -hmm. Like one of the biggest things right now is. Uh, I was having a conversation with someone a few days ago who who said that um, them and their parents disagree about uh, gay marriage. And they said that the conversation got horrible and it got heated and it got crazy and people got really upset. And it's like it didn't even apply to them. Like the idea of gay marriage, gay marriage shouldn't even apply to them. But they got into a heated debate about it because one agreed and one didn't agree. Yeah. And I think it's it's healthy to have good conversations about things you believe in. It's different when you start to deal with conflict. It's how you have those conversations that matter about who you are and what your character is. I'm sure when Jesus had the 12 disciples, that they probably disagreed a lot. Probably didn't get along all the time. I mean, you put 12 different personalities in one room and expect everybody to get along. I'm sure that's really hard. And so I'm sure that there's people who disagreed about a lot of things when you're dealing with family drama. So make sure that when you do have these conversations about politics, about religion, about whatever it is at your next family gathering, remember in your mind, how am I going to deal with it? What's the way to deal with it? And in no way am I perfect at this at all because there have been times where you just need to get up and leave. You just need to get up and say, Mm -hmm. I need some space. I need some room. Just so you won't say things you won't regret. Yeah. It's okay to get up and walk away sometimes and just say, I need a minute. Maybe spend some time in prayer before you go into a family gathering to just say, hey, God, please... Please help me to not say things I'm going to regret. Please help me to be kind and courteous and gentle towards family members who won't act the same towards me. Yeah, you're you're right. I'm sure there was drama between the disciples and Jesus. And and that made me, you know, made me think about that that story where the disciples are trying to get Jesus to tell them who is his favorite. You know, they're like, come on, tell us who's, who's your favorite. And I'm sure he looked at them and was like, I don't want to deal with this right now. You guys are being stupid. Yeah. Um, yeah. So fathers present a good example of what that looks like. The next time you go to a family gathering and talk about conflict or talk about religion or talk about some sort of past thing somebody did, whatever, present grace well and be kind and set a good example for your kids. Uh, I had a really great example of that growing up. There were times where you just got up and walked away. You were just like, nope. Not gonna do it. I'm not gonna put myself in a situation where I'm gonna say something stupid. Right. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of the times I avoided conflict because I hate conflict Mm -hmm. and I did a disservice to you teaching you how to deal with conflict properly. But I hope you learn that somewhere else. (laughs) Thanks. So I'm sorry. That's okay. I forgive you. Mm -hmm. And daughters, take a good example of what it means to to be gracious. What do you mean take a good example? Find someone in your life who who can deal with conflict okay. graciously. Yeah, because you may have a father who does not... You might have a father who does not deal with it gracefully. Um, you might have a mother who doesn't deal with it gracefully. Yeah. You, might have, you might be surrounded by people in your life who do not deal with conflict well. Find someone in your life who, who deals with conflict in a really great and healthy way. Like one of the best people who ever taught me how to, how to deal with conflict was my aunt. On our, on my mom's side, Maritza, if you're listening, you you displayed a very great example of how to deal with conflict. Why? Her and I deal with conflict pretty much the same way. Um, I disagree. I think 
that's why we get along so well because we look at the rest of the family and and <laughs> we're like everyone's crazy let's just we have, have a very a good time. loud very rambunctious family and i love all of them dearly that's why we just do puzzles you're you're sometimes a little bit more vocal than most mm. um when you do end up dealing with conflict I, I i will agree that yeah i think you deal with it in very similar ways but but I, I just remember a few key times in my childhood where I just saw her sit there, just take in all the information. And then when the time was right, she would present what she needed to say. She'd say what she needed to say, but she would wait, mm-hmm. know when the opportune moment was, have all of the information and be able to present it correctly. And, and, and I never really noticed that until I was an adult. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. She, she, she's doing the right thing. She's doing great. That, and that's not to speak poorly against anybody else in our family or even my immediate family. That's not to say anything bad against you or mom. Yeah. Um, that was just somebody in my life that I was like, wow, she she's doing it right. She'd find a way to bring some kind of humorous element into things and she'd laugh about something and, and just lighten the mood because sometimes yeah. t- sometimes just laughing about some stuff makes dealing with conflict easier. She's very patient. She's very patient. And mm-hmm. she was one of the people in my life who really taught me how to deal with conflict well. Huh, good. So yeah, ladies, find someone in your life who deals with conflict graciously, who's patient, who uses their words wisely, and, and, and learn from that person because that person might be able to teach you a lot that you don't know. Yeah. So I hope as the holidays happen in the next couple months that uh, you guys have great family gatherings. And if there is conflict or there's elephants in the room that you make the right choice Mm -hmm. on how to deal with that right yeah go in prepared go in expecting the best Mm -hmm. prepared for the worst expecting the best so now that thanksgiving is over here we go now it's christmas time yeah duh everyone's like christmas starts today no christmas started three weeks ago when i decorated so but now it's officially christmas time go ahead okay so, in the song Frosty the Snowman, what made Frosty come to life? Um, there's magic in the old silk hat he found. Yes, good job. Thanks. Good job. What Christmas decoration was originally made from strands of silver? Tinsel. Good. We Did we ever put tinsel on our Christmas tree? No, it was no, too messy. No, it was too messy. All right. Per a recent holiday fad, what spy, quote unquote, Heights around the house. Elf on the shelf. Good. That's how the government watches you. <laughs> <laughs> they put a microphone, a spy device in, in a it's Elf true. on the shelf. It's true. Be careful. What animated 2004 film is about a train that carries kids to the North Pole? The Polar Express. Duh. Magic carpet on a road. Oh, you, you're not going to know this one. Okay. What Christmas edible is known for its long shelf life? What Christmas edible is known for its long shelf life? Candy canes? Fruitcake. That'll go right through you. In Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, Okay. what was Mr. Scrooge's first name? Oh, shoot. Uh-huh. Um, I don't remember. I don't know. Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Dang it. I knew that, too. Okay. And last one. Okay. What Bing Crosby song is the best-selling single ever? It's the most wonderful time of the year. No. No? Uh, mm, rocking Around the Christmas Tree? No. I don't One know. One more try. No. Just White don't. Christmas. Oh, I would not have guessed huh. that. Interesting. Interesting, huh? Yeah, that's kind of cool. All right. Cool. May your, may your family gatherings be merry. Um, treat each other with love and respect. Any of our family that's out there listening and you're like, oh my gosh, they talked poorly about us. No, we love you, but you're crazy sometimes, so get over it. Yeah. And try and be Christ-like. I know it is hard sometimes. It is very hard for me. (laughs) But be loving and patient and forgiving. Amen. You guys have a great week. Yeah. Have a good night. We'll see you later. Thank you for listening to the Fathers and Daughters podcast, a Musket Entertainment production. For questions, comments, or topic ideas, email fdpodcast at yahoo.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new episodes.